show and tell. Let's have a look at some small measuring equipment and let's begin with this pocket caliper. This here is one of my favorite and most often reached for tools. This caliper is by the Ella Sterrett Company of Athol, Massachusetts, United States of America. And this here is model number 1025 MEME -E for a metric. Notice that the rule on the, the bottom side of this caliper is it graduated in millimeters. However, I like the metric version because not only do I use metric a fair bit, uh, the metric also has imperial as well as metric on the caliper. So you get the best of both worlds. Nice to be a little bit bi bilingual here. Anyways, this caliper is absolutely fantastic. Uh, oh, it's just so well suited for, well, around the shop for measuring any sort of variety of, uh, of small parts that you come across. And it's really nice and smooth. And the locking mechanism is great. This is a cam lock as opposed to a compression screw. And a cam lock takes only a small amount of turns to get it locked, and it can be unlocked single-handed to fully unlocked uh, just like that. And when it is locked, it is so solid that sometimes I'll measure something at home and I'll stick this in my pocket, go off to the hardware store, and I'm, all, I'm ready there to, to measure whatever it is that I need over there. Yeah, these are really, really sweet. Um, Sterrett makes a big deal about all of their measuring equipment being machine divided as, as opposed to laser etched. And I kind of wonder what the, what the, the function of that, what the, what's the benefit of that? Well, one thing is it is kind of neat. If you take a real close up view of, uh, the text and the engravings on here, you can actually see the machining marks. So that's, that's kind of neat, I guess. Uh, but I think the real advantage of machine dividing has to do with these ruler ticks. Uh, these ruler ticks, they are shaped like a V, like a V groove, as opposed to uh, a photographic etched uh, steel surface where the tick marks are going to have a flat bottom. These here have a tick, like a, like a, like a V groove, and by having a very slight bevel, on the edge of the measuring surface, what it ends up is that these tick marks are gradually taper to a very fine point. So that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, I, I like this caliper so much, I bought a second one. This one here I got, actually this is a new one, this is a used one from eBay. You can find them on eBay for a fairly good price off and maybe got this for 50 bucks or something like that. But even on Amazon, occasionally you get really good deals. Ordinarily this was like ridiculously expensive, they didn't want 400 bucks or some ridiculous number like that. But I watched and I watched it and, uh, and eventually the price went down to 100 bucks and well, now I have a second one that I keep upstairs and I, uh, I use it all the time. Yeah, they are uh, quite similar, but not identical. Uh, you notice that there was a change in the font from this older one to the newer one. This matches the rulers as far as I can tell on the catalog pages at the moment. A little bit different for their markings on the obverse as well. Uh, it doesn't have the Athol Massachusetts made in the United States mark, though the website does assure me that it is made in the States. Well, hopefully that is the case. Anyways, really beautiful little pocket calipers. Definitely get yourself a pocket caliper of some variety because they are really handy. Maybe avoid those cheap Chinese brass ones. You want these uh, measuring faces to be uh, a bit of a harder metal, I, I think. Anyways, that's on my pocket calipers. Now let's take a look at some small calipers. Uh, these one here have a capacity of about uh, 6 inches or 150 millimeters. This one's metric, you can tell by the yellow dial. Uh, available on the white dial as well. So yeah, this is a Sterrett uh, dial caliper made in, again, it does say Athol USA, made in the United States, proudly displayed on that dial there. This is number 128. M. Of course, you can get an Imperial. Not a bad caliper. I, I do quite like it. It's a really, really quick and easy to read, and um, it, it always returns to zero. That's pretty well, it didn't return to zero that time. Might be a bit of dust in there. It always returns to zero when it's nice and clean. So it's a pretty good caliper. But 
for my six inch ca class for my six inch category class of caliper i usually reach for this mitutoyo vernier a lot of people don't like verniers but i have no problem with them i quite enjoy i, I can read them just perfectly quick now i really like this model because it is their diamond series their diamond series well take a look at the uh what do you call that part of a caliper i guess that's the beam take a look at its profile it has well it's beveled and what that means is the moving head is completely flush and it's zero parallax zero pair if you if you're going to get a vernier caliper which I recommend you get. They are they are more well. They're definitely more robust than these guys. This thing's uh, a little bit delicate, a lot more robust. But um, if you're gonna get a vernier caliper, try to get yourself a zero parallax uh, version. They're not easy to come by though. But anyways, yeah, zero parallax, really easy to read. This one's accurate uh, to about a twentieth of a millimeter. It has, a, uh, it has a little depth uh, thing at the bottom of it, so uh, as does the Starrett. Anyways, that's uh, my, some of my calipers that I enjoy using. Now let's take a look at some pocket rules, which are quite handy to have. Let's start off with this imperial rule here. This here is in inches. This is a brand chinois out of Japan, made in Japan. And this here is what's called a 4R rule. 4R rule means that it is graduated in varying precision. Uh, we have here a scale in eighths, and then we have a scale here in sixteenths. And then on the obverse, so we got a scale here in 30 seconds, and we got a scale here in 64ths. Really nice to have that varying precision because well, you always choose the precision that's necessary for the job. Let's say you're measuring a part and you know that the part is going to be some, I don't know, five-eighths of an inch or something like that. Well, then you could use the lower uh, the lower resolution part of the ruler. If, if you don't know uh, that, maybe you can use something high, uh, some higher resolution. But then you got to really be eyeing up these tick marks a little bit more carefully. If you want to do some marking, if you want to use a rule to, to, to make a mark... Well, you're going to choose the uh, the scale with the fewest uh, tick marks on it, the, uh, the 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 resolution that you need, and that's going to reduce your chances of well, making a fuck up. Anyways, that's a four R rule. Starrett makes them, but well, Sheen was a lot cheaper, and it seems pretty nice to me. Uh for metric, I have this rule here by Mitya Toyo, and I really quite like this one here. This rule is pretty neat in that it is variable precision as well on one side here we have it graduated in millimeters the other side we got it graduated in half millimeter increments now why this rule is cool is because notice that it reads left to right on this side flip it over and it reads right to left that is really handy let's say when you want to measure the height of something you can always get this at the right um you can always get it at the right at the right side and and, and presenting it in a, the scale in the way that you want it. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a nice little uh, pocket rule here. Anyways, let's uh, break out some gauge blocks and uh, let's just test these uh, calipers for accuracy. Now let's start with the 10 millimeter gauge block and measure it with the pocket caliper. And the pocket caliper is only graduated to the nearest half millimeter, but it's nice to see whether the tick marks are lining up. And we can see here they're 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 perfectly lined up. Now let's try this steric caliper. The steric caliper, uh, the needle is very reliable, and that the needle always returns to zero. Uh, let's try ten millimeters. And you know the way that you, you that you measure with a caliper, you don't measure like this, but instead you measure it by pinching the uh, pinching the jaws down on the test uh, piece. Well, uh, here we have it pretty good. Maybe it's reading a tiny bit higher than uh, than uh, than the ten millimeter mark, but it's well within within accuracy. Now, once again, you measure 
by pinching the jaws, you don't measure like this, because watch what would happen if you measure it like that. You can cause flexure by doing this a little too uh, vigorously, by putting a little too much clamping force on. Uh, this metal that the caliper is made out of, it's, well, it's, it's not very thick, and well, it, it flexes. Anyways, that's the dial uh, caliper. Now let's try this uh, Mitutoyo uh, vernier, and you'll see just how how easy this is to read. Let me get it so that you can see it properly. Yeah, it's, it's just right exactly on the 10 millimeter mark. Desert, I, I really like this caliper. Easy to read, and it's just really, really reliable. Now let's try a different gauge block. Let's try a big gauge block. This here is 60 millimeters. Okay, and then with this stare at pocket caliper, that should be right on the money. And yeah, yeah, this thing is, is, is quite, quite um, accurate. Now let's try the stare at dial caliper. Make sure that's going to zero. Goes to zero just fine. And then... Uh, get that right. And once again, you see that it is reading a little bit high. It's still well within parameters, but I think that this really finely graduated dial is giving a little bit of a false sense of precision. And really, these calipers are uh, expecting two one hundredths of a millimeter out of them. That's maybe a little bit of a reach. If you really need that sort of precision, you're going to want to use a micrometer or something like that. Anyways, it did not a bad job. But let's try this uh, vernier and see how that does. And uh, it's right on the money. Yeah, I really like these calipers. My go-to's for when I'm doing any sort of machining. Anyways, I hope you like this look at uh, some calipers and some rulers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.